he can call you on the phone and he says, by the way, this, this is Moshe. I'm calling it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Moshe who? <laughs> Moshe Weinberger. Rabbi. We call <laughs> Rabbi. Rabbi, okay, hi. It was nice to get your call. Welcome to the pod. We, we moved from Queens, New York, we're over to um, Cedarhurst in the five towns. And his Shul Eish Kodesh is in a small town right next to it. It's called Woodmere. So from the time I, I had heard, he's a great rabbi. And that's probably the place I want to go. But I said, before I go there, I want to check out all these other shuls around here. And I take with this, a few of them. And when I went into Eish Kodesh, I said, there's no question. This is where I'm going from now on. <laughs> there's no question about it. And, that's, and that was 2007. 2007. Right. Ah, oh, okay. And we stayed there in Shul from 2007. Um, we we moved to we moved here to Israel at the end of 2017. So, so ten years, you're like mamash next to the Rav all the time. It was a learning experience. This is the most. Can you talk about fabulous. it a little bit, Adam? Like uh, more about oh. about the Rav and like hit the the keilah because. I'm not in New York, but I hear like insane things. I see crazy videos. When he speaks, it's like I've never seen um, such a a real and authentic person mm -hmm. that's well that's so well known yes. and like followed by a younger crowd. And he himself is young. Yes, he's not really like the you know the the last generation. He's very much our generation and connected and and understands what we're going through. But like. He, he was raised by like Holocaust survivors. He was raised yes. by the, the, the old school Europeans. Yes. What's going on there? Like, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this. This is how he is. Every second counts. If you go up to him and you want to get his attention and stuff, you have to you have to make the appointment, Bec uh, unless it's right before Siyuda Shalishit. Then he's sitting in his chair. People finish davening and they're already going downstairs. But if you want to talk to him, he's sitting in his chair and he's open to anybody that comes up to him for, I would say, a good 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, he goes downstairs. If you have a, a, but if you see him other, other times, he is on the dot. He, he, doesn't, he feels like it's robbery if you would take a moment of his time because he's so perfectly booked with things that he's got to do. And he, he loves people. He really, really loves people. And the way, the way he speaks with you is not like a Rav. Yeah, it's Hevra. He always says Hevra. It's Hevra. That's right. When he calls up, he, says, he's, he can call you on the phone. He says, by the way, this, this is Moshe. I'm calling it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Moshe who? <laughs> Moshe Weinberger. Rabbi. We call <laughs> Rabbi. Maybe okay. Hi, it was nice to get your call. And um, but he also he didn't let me get away with things. Um, if he wanted to tell me you're doing this wrong, he would say, "Mark, come over here. You should change this. You, you came into show late. He said, I, I know. I I got. I was a little late because of, no, no, no. It's not because of something you did. You come to show late." I, you shouldn't do that. And the same way, if you had a problem, he, he let you know. And I loved it because that's not what you get in other places. With all of the things he has in his mind, he's thinking about you and what he can do because y you got to move past this. Accountability as well. It's like the Rebbe is like teaching you. You know, yes. Like pick up your slack on and dive in. So I got a Rebbe pod, and it's, it's a iPod, i iPod, and it, I bought a thousand shirim, and then with that I listened to them all the time. They were all thousand shirim of shirim that he recorded over time, because every single time he spoke, except for halacha, except for gemara and halacha, al hashkafa, he recorded everything, and so it was. It was no brainer. You want to know what's going on? You just get his iPod, and then you listen every time you have a chance. 
So I did. One of the things that he had was doing tshuva with Rav Cook. Right. Or Amazing. Or tshuva. He had 244 assuring in order to present or tshuva. And so I said, I'm going to do tshuva. So <laughs> what Start I listening. So what I did was I, I got this was this was as soon as I got my iPod, I listened to a few shirim and then I said, Okay, I'm doing shiva. Uh-huh.